Hi, my name is Stuart with Metro Home Theater Group. Today we're going to discuss features and functions of SpyClops products. So when setting up a SpyClops IP camera, you'll need to know what LAN configuration you're already connecting them to. Um, if you don't already know what the IP address is uh, for the LAN, um, there's two places you can check. You can, already, you can check what the uh, IP address is uh, in the DVR once you've enabled DHCP, uh, or on a Windows PC, you can run command by typing CMD, and then you can type in IP config. And what this information will show you is the LAN IP that you have for your PC and also the gateway. Uh, what we're paying attention to are the first three octets of the IP address. Uh, in the case of this PC, it's on 192.168.100.161. Now, what that means is, uh, unfortunately, uh, SpyClops cameras come static IP uh, out of the box. Our uh, bullet cameras come at, set at 192.168.1.168 and our IP PTZ camera comes at 192.168.1.110. So in order to be able to see those cameras, um, once I connect them to my network, I'm gonna need to make a quick change to my PC just so I can get to where I see it. Um, and to do that, we're just gonna to get to our uh, network adapter settings um, by going to Network Center, and we're gonna change the adapter settings. And uh, more importantly, we're going to um, go to our IPv4 settings. And what we're gonna do is just double click on the IPv4 settings, and we're gonna change the information. Instead of telling it automatically where it's getting all the information from your router, um, we're gonna predefine that information. Um, and since our cameras on our 192.168.1 uh, situation, we're gonna put our PC on the same, same one. So in this case, uh, we're gonna assign an IP address of 192.168.1.2. And the subnet mask will always be, the uh, first three octets will be 255, so it'll be 255.255.255.0. And we'll, we'll assign a gateway of 192.168.1.1. Now once you've done, you've done this, it's important that you click OK to get all of these uh, sections closed or it won't actually take effect. Um, but once you've done that, we can actually minimize these and uh, now we're going to actually log into it. Now, we won't be connected to the internet anymore um, because we're not getting information, we're not actually connected to the router uh, in this network anymore. We're actually just connected to Nowhere Land. However, the cameras that we've already connected to this network are also in Nowhere Land and we need to fix that. So, in this video, we're going to go through the steps of setting up the IP bullet camera. And to do that, we're going to type in the IP address in the address bar of 192.168. Dot 1.168 and you'll notice that when you've logged into the camera for the first time it's going to ask you to download the OCX controls um, these are the ActiveX plugins that we use uh, to allow you to see the video and menus of the cameras um, do remember that you need to use Internet Explorer when logging into SpyClops IP cameras um, so we'll, we'll want to make sure we're sticking with that unfortunately you cannot use Firefox Chrome Edge or Safari for doing this you need to use Internet Explorer so we'll need to download and install uh, these plugins. So we'll click download and we'll tell it run. And we'll tell it run. Yes. And we'll go through the installation process. And we'll hit finish. Now we'll need to refresh this to, to, for these uh, applications to take place. So we'll actually just refresh the browser here. And now we can actually see the login screen. Now the default login and password for our IP bullet cameras and our PTZ cameras is the same. Um, they're both admin for the username and admin for the password. So we'll go ahead and, and type that in to log into the cameras. And we'll hit login. And there's really uh, just a couple things that we need to do to get this camera ready to work with SpyClops uh, hybrid DVRs. Um, the first thing we're going to do, since we're going to want to use this camera for this setup, to uh, we're going to want it to be able to detect motion detection uh, with the DVR. So uh, in order to do that, first we'll go ahead and select alarm, and then we'll check enable alarm and enable the motion detection, and you click OK, and that'll save that. And then we're going to go to the motion section, 
And uh, for this camera, I want it to detect the entire area of the picture for motion. So we're gonna hit select all. Uh, if you want to select just certain areas for motion detection, you can do that manually. Uh, you can either clear all if you just have a small area that you want to detect, um, or if you have a small area where you do not want to detect, you can just tell it select all, and then you can clear the, uh, the sections that you don't want. Um, so we're, on this, we're gonna hit select all, and we're gonna click okay, and that's gonna save it. And then the next thing we need to do is change the IP address to be friendly with our LAN that we're connecting this to. So we're going to select network. And uh, the network that we're connected to, what we saw when we ran uh, IP config, is we need to be on a .100 uh, for the first three octets. So we'll just change that and we'll give it a gateway that matches also. So .100. Um, other than that, everything else seems to match our network. So we'll leave it at that and I'll click OK. And once I click OK, it's going to need to reboot that camera. Um, so you'll, it takes about a minute for those settings to apply and it'll give you a little countdown window in the browser. So you'll want to give that, that full minute to, of time to apply the changes and reboot that camera back up so we can log into it. It's important once you've set up your IP cameras, you've logged in, you've changed and assigned IP addresses to each of those cameras. And remember, each one has to have a unique IP address per camera. Um, it's important to go ahead and set your network back the way it was because now we want to be able to actually access that network with our PC. So we're going to open up the Ethernet uh, section here. We're going to go to Properties and we're going to change our IPv4 settings. And we're going to switch it back to Obtain Automatically uh, for the IP address and also correct it for the DNS server address. Set that all back to Automatic and we'll click OK and then OK and we'll close that. And now we'll be back on our network where we can actually be internet connected and also connect to the same cameras. For more information and helpful videos, please visit us at metrahometheater.com.